I am unashamed. What about you? So I missed teal season the opening weekend, which, you know, y'all been real quiet about what you shot because I'm getting the impression that y'all should have shot more than you did. I wasn't there. Jay overslept, which is a terrible excuse. I was out there sharing Jesus. I went Louisiana, Georgia, North Carolina, Michigan, Indiana, Kentucky, Georgia, Louisiana in 36 hours. Oh, this is all in one run? Oh, yeah. Well, you didn't have much picking time then. No, I didn't. When I showed up, <laughs> bam. <laughs> he the whole load. But, you know, it really went good. Love the people I met. It's awesome. I share it. One of them, it, what's, what's crazy about this is one of them was a hunting outdoors, hunting and fishing experience is what they called it. In North Carolina, we were just out in the hills somewhere. It's kind of like a campground. And so uh, my my walk-up song they played for me, you know, they all, they had a band and uh, was a Tennessee whiskey. So I was like, well, that's unusual. And uh, so I got my duck calls out, did that, my There's seminar. a song called Tennessee Whiskey. You heard oh, yeah. Tennessee yeah. Whiskey? No, no it's, a good, it's a good oh, song. Oh, I love Chris Smooth, yeah. smooth oh. as Tennessee smooth Whiskey. As Tennessee. Oh, you, need okay. to, you need to loosen up. Well, that, that's a good yeah. tune. I don't, I don't listen to a lot So I'm just saying, I don't think my point is, I don't think they realized that I was fixing to introduce Jesus. We were fixed to turn this into the first time someone had been, had a church experience on a Saturday in, in you know, on a side of a mountain. Did the duck calls, told a few jokes, ha, 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 and I pulled up the Bible, and I could tell, I'd say a third of the audience, I could tell they were nervous. A murmur. They were like, is that a Bible? Of course, I did the little joke, I think I got it from you, that's like, you know, I know I look like a preacher, but I'm really not. I'm a believer. <laughs> there was a few light chuckles. And uh, so I said, you know, my my walk-up song here was Tennessee Whiskey. I said, but you got to remember, I'm going to introduce you to the person who introduced this phrase, hold my wine and watch this. <laughs> I said, his name was Jesus. Now, they laughed when I said that. <laughs> I haven't heard that one before. Well, I made it up. That's but I, yeah, That's hold my beer and watch I've heard it. the hold my Basically, beer. Basically, hold my wine and watch this. Jesus had a reputation of being a glutton and a drunkard. That's what he said. Ma- Matthew 11. In his own words. Yeah. So I'm like, because he, he, he hung around the riff, Ralph. Why? Because he loves everybody. You know. Right. Yep. So I introduced Jesus to him. You know what? They actually stood up and clapped and nobody left. I thought that was a good sign. Good time. And then the next day in Kentucky, I was at a at a church building. So it was a different kind of audience there. You know, I got up there and said, you know, does anybody love Jesus here? And, you know, they went nuts. So I was like, okay. But still, it was the same message. I mean, same message. So it was pretty good. But then I come back, and then we went teal hunting this morning. Guess what? They didn't come. I was in New Zealand one time, and I was brought up Jesus, who he is, what he did for the human race, including people from New Zealand, what he's now doing, interceding for us, and what he will do, return. I was on that topic, and about five minutes into it, the sound that came out of the large audience was, this was the sound, but there's 1,500, 2,000 people, and they're all doing this together. <laughs> so I like some weird like a, like a, like a bumblebees. Yeah, the, like guy, a, the guy in charge. I, I thought back and I said I heard those Brits doing that at the House of Commons. The House yep. of Commons yep. when when some politicians would be giving a speech, the president or the prime minister or whatever. I said I heard that sound. So I asked the guy that put on the gig. I said, "What's that? <clears throat> that low?" That low of them. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, he said, they're telling you they don't like what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. Well, and yeah. I said, well, I'm giving them the good news about <laughs> Jesus. Their sins removed, guaranteed to be ready. He said, they've never, this is the first time, Mr. Robertson, those New Zealanders had ever heard anyone Jesus. publicly 
speak about religious things. I said, are you kidding? He said, no. So listen, everybody says, well, that was a terrible experience. I had a table set up after the speech, and the and people were coming up. They would look to their left and their right, like make sure no one was listening, and they would whisper to me, we appreciate what you said, but don't <laughs> tell anybody I said that. <laughs> so look, <clears throat> one after the other, they would whisper, we appreciate it, <clears throat> we, we, we really respect you. On the computer, which I don't have one, Uh there were emails coming from New Zealand, and they were really open by saying, man, we we thought that was was great. There was a a large percentage of them that were not turned off at all, but I was given the impression this bunch— Because of the murmur. Because of the murmur, I thought, well, they're all against— hearing the good news about Jesus, but I'm here. And one of the cities I was in, the name of the city was Christ Church, New Zealand. Yeah. So I oh. said, he's been through here. Somebody has before me. <laughs> oh, no, my son was just in New Zealand That's for, what I'm saying. for a month. And he was like, oh, he, he, he had a lot of good yeah. worship experiences. So, so somebody's. Well, somebody's what they've done is. I saw two houses <clears throat> of worship, as they call them, church buildings. I didn't see but two. The whole time, and I drove. We drove. But that was like Duck twenty years ago. Speaking, yeah, it's about twenty yeah, yeah, plus 20, years ago. Yeah, but there was a couple <coughs> of church buildings as all I ever saw, and I was looking for them because in Louisiana, there's one on every street corner. But I didn't see many it's churches different. with signs well, out there. But there's there also in Louisiana, every street sign has multiple bullet holes in it. You are correct. <laughs> so <laughs> you can't really base. A uh, book by its cover. <laughs> yeah, correct. well, that's well, Jace, more that sounded like a good speaking tour you went on there. That's you neat. know it was. I mean, I hated that I missed teal season, but we've had such crappy teal seasons the yep. last couple of years. I was like, you know what, I'm going to do it. And then this year, in a weird turn of events, we actually got a lot of water. Yeah, and we got teal. But then today, which we had our chance, we did have a bunch today that came over. But y'all have hunted three days, and I'm trying to figure out why nobody. Put motion decoys in the decoys. Because your decoy technician is sleeping late. <laughs> I thought he was, you know, stone. You were gone. The boy yeah. that married my granddaughter, your yeah. your daughter, Al. My son, he can't man. make it because he didn't set an alarm. I, I'm that like, it, I look, that's embarrassing. Oh, it's I mean, embarrassing. He, when I called, look, I called Saturday morning. I was like, "Y'all burn them," and he said, "Well, I overslept." <laughs> I said, "You did what?" Yeah, he wasn't there. He Let's said, "Yeah, I got a new alarm clock." I was like, "That that's inexcusable." I mean, he ain't no duck. Hunter. But look, he got an alarm clock that not only sounds like a bullhorn, but he's it, there's a deal that goes under his mattress. It shakes his whole bed. Really? When it goes off, that's what Nan told me. My that's what my it, daughter. It shakes me. the bed. Still? It shakes the bed. Well, he I, What's so wrong with so, him? so so I'm in Texas speaking. So I sent a text. <laughs> Because I wanted to give a teal report. That was going to be my open when I got up to speak. And so I'm like, did y'all get them this morning? And I got the same thing. I yeah. overslept. And I was like, how did you oversleep with this new system? I mean, you're yeah. supposed to shake the whole bed. He said, well, instead of turning it on, I turned it off. So we all know that, I mean, life is fleeting. It doesn't last long, which is why we're doing our podcast because we're trying to point people to, toward more of an eternal uh, setting and setup. And but off and on calamities coming at any time. Any time. Know. It happens. It's happened all throughout civilization. So we want to be ready. Our deal is, you know, we want to be prepared for eternity, but at the same time we're doing our best to be prepared for whatever happens on the earth. A right? calamity comes your way and 20 years later you've got mac and cheese. Just reach over there in a, in a drum and pull it out of there, and it's good. 20 years after the calamity, you say, well, we still eating macaroni and cheese through it all. I would say that would be a pretty good call if, uh-huh. you, if you were stuck in that situation, right? So our good friends uh, at Patriot Pantry, uh, My Patriot Supply, uh, they've got a four-week uh, food supply here. And, the, and as Dad said, this food lasts up to 25 years. So uh, in one bucket, you get four weeks worth? Yeah. So get- it's not eternal manna, but it's the closest thing you can get on the earth because if right. it lasts what was it last 20 years there's just yeah. so many alligators you could kill and eat and catch fish 
and all this, this would be a side that would always be there, a That's side right. dish. Yeah, exactly. Well, you know, what we kept waiting today, well, we caught some catfish and yeah. killed two coons. We're going to eat those two coons and the catfish, and we have mac and cheese <laughs> for sides. That's right. Or, or you know, yeah. what well, we got here, some cheesy uh, broccoli and rice soup. Well, well and it depends you on the calamity. If there was, like, radiation or whatever and you couldn't eat the alligator, then – you would just have yeah. mac and cheese with a side of cheesy broccoli hey, and rice soup. You could soup. survive. You could survive. Exactly. You could survive. So uh, if we want you to act today. You're going to save 100 bucks on one of these four-week uh, emergency food buckets. Yep. You need to go to preparewithphil.com. Preparewithphil.com. Uh, you'll save 100 bucks, and you'll be prepared in case something happens. I, I live by an old code, never run out of grub. That's Never right. run out of grub, Al. This is accurate. Or a way to get some, kill some This grub, is right? the way to, 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 to make that come true. Never run out of grub. Prepare with Phil.com. Check it out. Save some money and be prepared. Yeah. Well, that, but that's, that's, that's pretty just, much alarm clock 101. He didn't want to go. We're sitting on <laughs> nine till, seven on Saturday, two yesterday. And uh, if I'd had Jace as a, another gun hand, Instead of nine, we'd be sitting on 12, 13. Mm, well, but so well, we're not seeing many. I think you just I've gave me all, a compliment. So that's the first one. Yeah. Every 10 but years, you, you need to throw one out. No, and, and I don't know if that'd be true or not because <laughs> I can't, you know, if they don't bunch up, okay, I can't kill them like I normally kill them. Okay. So they were spread no, out. So spread I, I out. noticed something about you, Sal. When I'm not there, your killing percentage goes no, way down. You no, know why? I don't hear that. Because you can't claim the ducks that no, I'm shooting. Right. Sal si no. does much better when the teal light on the water ball up, right he before, says. Right before. And, and they're not swimming. They're just sitting on no, the water. No. And he right shoots simultaneously the with the other hunters. He's a groundswatter. I have to say, I'm with you. I, that's no, no, how I like I, to shoot them. Look, what y'all are saying don't hold water. <laughs> You shooting actually full choke, okay? So you nope. ain't killing nothing. We get them at fifteen yards. Negative. I'm shooting. I would cut off a foot of my barrel, okay, if it was allowable. But y'all <laughs> won't let me do it. But I'm shooting an open bore. A blunderbuss. Okay, so when I shoot, and trust me, I patterned all the new guns chokes, and the really? one that I kept, the reason I kept it, was the open bore because hey. You could have, I could kill a hummingbird, can't get through my shells. Okay. So, so move a little closer to your mic. Si, uh, so, so welcome, where, Uncle Sai. Where did yeah. that come from? Si, what have you been doing si, that? Sai si is in the Unashamed Podcast well, Command Center. Welcome, Sai. Right. Si. Well, we pleasure to be here with you guys. It's good to be here. And, and you know, when we start with about claiming ducks, which, you know, Sai was on the cover of one Duckman video. Out of all the ones we did, I mean, there were some multiple pictures of our no, family, no. but you were on one by yourself, and the title of it was The Art of Claiming Ducks. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> Which, I think that was Phil's idea. Blame your brother for that. Well, no, no. Well, hey, I understand why, okay? No, I know not why. Only, not only is there an art to claiming them, okay? There's a art to kill them, okay, to back up the claiming. Okay, and I got them both. <laughs> So I knew we had problems when, while you were sleeping in the duck blind, we put shells filled with baby powder in your gun, and you raised up and shot twice and said, well, boys, I went two, two for two. two. <laughs> I said, Si, you sell this white powder? We had powder in your bullets. And he said, well, they must have been defective. Because when I pulled the trigger, they folded. That's right. Well, she had three men killing? on his right and three men on his left shooting. Uh, <laughs> you you, you, si, how good do you have to be to kill ducks with baby powder? I mean, you are some no, kind of... Fa- no, no, see, that's what I'm talking about. I kill them no matter what they do to my gun. I still kill them. You know? Oh, that's pretty oh, good. Man. All so right, I'll I'll where are we? Well, <laughs> well, I was going to tell you one other thing that happened. Yeah, you know, then I Friday, someone. we went through the process... You know, my daughter goes to West Monroe. I went to public high school. You know, we get a – they have these automated – y'all, I'm going to have to explain this to y'all because you probably don't even realize what I'm fixing to say. <laughs> it's like an automated phone system where the school make a recording and they'll push a button and it goes out to all the parents because there's like – what is there, 3,000? A lot. Over 20, two, yeah, 2,500 no, students. Two and 3,000. <laughs> so they're like, the school is on lockdown. I'm like, school's on lockdown. 
what, what are we talking about? You know, like 10 minutes later, get another message. Do not come get your kid. The school is on lockdown. So I guess the parents come up there. Well, come to find out, there was two armed men, you know, at the school. At first there's one, then, oh, there's another one. And so my daughter, you know, goes through this process. But And you see this on TV and the school shootings, how horrible they are. But it was weird to to go through the process of what happens, even though this turned out without anybody being hurt, except the two men that had the guns being probably thrown down on the ground. Mm-hmm. But And uh, so when my daughter gets home, you know, because they they pretty much once they apprehended the two guys, are and, these students? Are these no men? It was one fifty year old, fifty something year old, and a twenty five year old man. They had like guns on holsters with guns. They're walking around school campus. You know, a teacher took went to a coach. This was the story I got. You know, said, "Hey, there's two guys with guns out here walking around." He's like, okay. "No, I'm sure you're mistaken." You know, but she but she just thought, "No, I know what I just saw." But she briefly just saw a glimpse of him, like going behind a building. So she called the principal. And it's a big school, you know, so you just don't run over somewhere. And she's like. I think I just saw two two men with guns. So, of course, you know, in this place, you know, there's we have people with guns every hundred yards somewhere. So, you know, they got out there and got these guys down on the ground. But from my daughter's perspective, you know, they're coming over the intercom. School's on lockdown. This is not a drill. This is not a drill. You know, men with guns are on the campus, you know. So basically when my daughter said that happened, she was in choir. And uh, the teacher took off because he's going to lock the doors. And uh, she's like five of the biggest guys in their class. There's like 150 uh, kids in that in that cl- in the in the choir. Like they they started looking for weapons, which which made me realize the natural instinct of people when you take all weapons away from you know inside a school, let's say, and they say there's people with guns here. Your instinct is to find some sort of weapon. And they got by the door, which is what the kids did. Yeah. So then they're all whispering and all. And uh, she said that a couple of years ago, the choir, they had, they had learned this song about God. It's something about mighty God. And she said one of the kids just started singing it. And uh, she got her phone out because then they all started singing it. She said first the lights were on as she was getting her phone, you know, because they said they had apprehended one or, you know, whatever. But then – they said the lights all went off, and they like, there's another, there's two of them. And so she videoed them singing this song, and uh, I want to let y'all listen to just a little bit of it. But because you think about the setting, everybody's quiet, everybody's scared. Cause my daughter was scared. I mean, she, we, had, we had, you know, an hour talk about that. She was shaking because you see this happen, and you're like, is it going to happen to us? Right, right. But, uh, It's hard for me to hear. Can y'all hear that? Yeah. Yeah. And the reason it's dark, because it was pitch black dark. And the school was totally quiet. And you just, I mean, that, that's that's high school kids singing that. I mean, I'll make the hair stand up on the back of your neck. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look, when my daughter played that for us, I'm... Uh, Missy and I, we just, I got tears in my eyes. I was like, I said, you know what? I'm proud of you. You know, yeah. that, she's like, I didn't know the song because she's a, she was a freshman. They learned it, you know, when she, right. she's a sophomore now. But she said, I picked it up pretty quick. But I thought that was, you know, as bad as it is in our world, and as bad as these things happen for, you know, a group of young people at our public high school to do that was very inspirational. Hold on. Because what else can you do? We, we've set them up to fail right? In, you know, in most places. At, at our places, they apprehended them. Now, what they were exactly doing there is is up for debate. You know, they said they were bail bondsmen and they were on a, you know, they were looking for somebody. Then he had a, his cousin's sister, you know, went to West Monroe there and they were going to check on her. But the story didn't make sense because my wife employs, you know, all these people that have come out of addictions and rough life, and they knew one of them. As soon as they heard the name, they're like, oh, he's up to no good. You know, I was in rehab with him one time, you know, this guy. Hmm. So, you know, they charged them. They arrested them and charged them 
with whatever you can charge somebody with for walking around with guns on a on a high school and it was kind of scary for everybody but it did make me think that what i've always said i think we need to teach those principles of god when they when they took god out of a school they took those principles love principles is kind is patient doesn't envy doesn't rejoice in evil all these things that kids need they took that out and then when there's nobody armed at a school and they get in there with a gun well you're just sitting ducks right i think there's there should be you know two out of three teachers should go through a training program and they have a gun somewhere and if that happens and you don't know who they are so i guess when you think about the robertsons um one of our trademarks of course is hair uh mostly beards is what people think of us but also longer hair i'm the only one that's kind of a little more you know, styled. I suppose I died mine oh. the other morning because some of some of the my fellow hunters said that the ducks were seeing my white beard, so I just took me some of that hair dye, something <laughs> they call it, something. Well, you need and, to, and I just kind of did like this. Do it, do that again. I, get, I get up, you know, it's, it's kind, kind of, of streaky, a, so it's kind of a camouflage. It's look. a Spanish okay. moss. Uh, so anyway, so hair is kind of what we're known for. Uh, we don't really think about hair loss, although I don't know about you, Dad, but mine's getting pretty thin up top, um, and we do have baldness in the family. I didn't put any dye on my hair. My I'm 73, so by this time I should be getting gray headed. But actually, I'm, I'm not. That I'm not. Much. You look good. You look good. I don't, I don't know what going, that's about. I'm not going bald. I, I, I'm, I got so, but the people do, which yeah, you know, I'm which sure. totally sucks yeah. that when they go bald. So now uh, they've discovered there's a hormone called DHT, and they think it's the loss of this that causes people to lose their hair. So the FDA has approved two hair treatments for this DHT. Unfortunately, it's like super expensive. So our good friends at Keeps, because they say, do you want to keep your hair? I'm like, yeah, that's a good idea. If I got hair, I want to keep it as long as possible, right? So they've come up with sort of an inexpensive generic version of this DHT, or DHT, uh, which is the hormone. So what they're saying is you take our product, 90% effective to hold on to your hair, which, you know, it we don't have or as effective as most people but you look around there's a lot of people going bald so so they found a cheap creative way for people to look like us that's right i'm not sure that's a good thing <laughs> well you might want to cut the hair once you oh, keep it i mean that may be the difference that you know we're yeah. not quite getting but anyway so if you go to uh, keeps.com k e e p s.com and slash Phil, which I always think is is good, because Phil's your model to hold on to your hair. Uh, Keeps.com slash Phil. Uh, you get a free online doctor consult. You also get your first month of hair treatments free. Become like me, a hairy guy. There you go. Keep your hair. Keeps.com slash Phil. Check it out. That's right. That, that that's what I think should happen, but I don't know. I'll well, there's a lot of school systems that have adopted that, <clears throat> you know, in in certain states. Oh, Ohio, say, Ohio has yeah, a big. It was it was on the news. Oh yeah, talking about you know that all these teachers at this school are going through gun training and they will be packing. But it seems like they're only Ooh. attacking the gun. I mean, right now that is the sore subject I think in our nation oh, yeah. about you know gun control, and I'm like. Well, we it's just not really the gun. No, we yeah. need people control. Okay, <laughs> that's what the problem is. Yeah. It ain't gun control. That's gun right. control ain't gonna stop it. That's right. Yeah. Now you got to control those that will buy guns and then go and do just what what we're talking about. Yeah, go somewhere like Walmart and just start shooting people. That's Which right. could it's have pe- happened. It's a people problem. I, I don't. After it all the smoke cleared i don't think that was their intent but who knows i mean you know they you know we're not very that school's not very far from you know the law enforcement headquarters i mean they descended on them you know throughout history throughout history mankind has turned on itself and it was a slaughterhouse Throughout the Old Testament, long before guns were invented, <laughs> gunpowder was invented, there were no guns. But their weapons of war was sharp sticks, bow and arrows, yep. spears, swords. Big rocks. You know, do not murder. The, the, the text, number six 
out of the top ten. Do not murder. Evidently, there was a murder problem 1,500 years before Jesus ever ever came to the earth. So it's been going on. Humans have been killing each other. And Since Cain the, and the, Abel? The, the, the precise yeah. uh, uh, instrument you use is not the issue. They say they're mentally ill. The Bible says well, some, they're controlled by evil. I yeah. think some are. I mean, you got... There are people with mental issues. Sure. I mean, look, I was driving down, coming teal hunting this morning, and I see some, you know, some uh, reflection because, you know, we're always looking deer across the road. In the middle and of the I, woods. Well, yeah, I'm basically yeah. in between here and and, uh, and town. So, I'm, yeah, I'm in yeah. the woods. All woods. <laughs> and I see eyeballs and I'm it, down, So I'm, but I'm like, that looks like human. So I slow down, and this there's a guy. There's not a vehicle anywhere around. He's he's on the side of the road. His his legs are in my in my lane, and his head is toward the ground, like he's throwing up or whatever. But he looked up, and I just kind of slowed down and thought, "What is going on here?" But but it just looked like the light was on, but nobody was home, and it was probably drug induced. You know, what time of morning was this? Five, five four forty five yeah. in the morning. Yeah. Oh, it happens you know, all the time. I see it all the time. I mean, look, there was like a thousand mosquitoes around him. They were just just the eating cloud. His, you know, uh, you don't walk around out here at four thirty in the morning on the edge of the grass. You know, I mean, especially get out on your knees. <laughs> everything here's going to hurt you. Yeah. yeah, but he just had a look in his eyes like, uh, uh-uh. uh. Well, we got so, some uh, meth. <clears throat> you know meth places out you know yep. they they get out of town so the cops won't bother them and so they come out a place like this they cook up the meth and so we see this traffic back and forth and we see it because we're hunting and you know four in the morning we're living in some dangerous times that's why we go around including this podcast reminding people loving god and loving each other should not be a foreign concept it no. should be embraced uh, yeah. and practiced and we would be far better off any way you want to slice well, it. Well, that's what I don't get about it. In today's world, worldwide, after you're looking at everything going on, you know, we've tried it the world's way. Common sense tells me, hey, let's try it God's way. Love your fellow man and treat him as you would want to be treated. Yeah, let's try really. that move and that see would, what happens. I think that'd be a good move. <laughs> no doubt about it. <laughs> and, you know, we're going to protect ourselves. That That's the missing link here. That's that's what happens sometimes is well, I think Christians get uh, bowed into the idea like, well, yeah. but, you know, turn the other cheek. Therefore, we are to, you know, we are to do what Beto O'Rourke says and just, you know, turn all our guns in and just say, you know, come get us. Well, that's why you got to have the you you got to have both. I mean, you got to have the spiritual side. You know, there's plenty of verses. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the that's world. Right. You yeah. know, they demolish strongholds because they they take captive thoughts, the thoughts of people, and that's why you share Jesus. And like I said, you you share these love principles. I think that should just be mandatory for all schools. No doubt. The name don't have you don't have to say it came from the Bible. It's just you have a course that you must take with algebra, geometry. It's called love. And you get – you take those principles. I think there's, what, 15 of them in that section, mm-hmm. 1 Corinthians 13? And you can have guest speakers, whoever you want. But this is the way as we function as a society. This is the best case scenario, at least where they hear it, you know, from all walks of life. Because I don't know anybody that can't unite on those principles. Right. You know, I read that they they told me not to. I, I spoke at a, a community event in Indiana. I think I might have told y'all about that. It was honoring the firefighters and the military, and but they said we don't want you to to bring up the Bible because we're trying to appeal, you know, to all people, and some of those people may not be believers. So I was like, okay, sure. So I talked about the author, which was my justification. You know, I was like, if I was in y'all's line of work and there was a way to live forever. I'd want to know about it. So I'm going to share with you what I believe in Jesus. But I did that. But then I quoted 1 Corinthians 13. Love is kind. Love is patient. You know, all, you know, doesn't rejoice in evil. It always protects. It always trusts. Well, then after that, the line formed. And, you know, I was taking pictures and talking to people. And several people said, where was that poem that you read? <laughs> <laughs> I said, that was in the Bible. And they were like, 
that's in the Bible? I was like, yeah. I was like, why? Well, I, I didn't know that. So we think everybody would know that. Right. But it was multiple people. And I thought, that's why you should teach that. Well, no, you know? because I want to go back to you when you were talking about the principal and the automation thing. Why would you push the Sorry, panic your, your button? Your whiskers are in the mic. Now they're all <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, Why would you push the panic button of 2,500 parents saying, okay, you know, we've got people on campus with guns? Well, so yeah. they wanted to let us. They wanted to let us yeah, know. Yeah, then and what are you doing? You're gonna cause a traffic jam. Ever parent? Well, then that's what the next one was. Don't come here. Yeah. But you've already told them. Right. That of course, they're going. Well, to then go they there. then they the next message was now come get your kid. It was like one thirty. Yeah. Now th- this is kind of funny. It's but really it's really not. Policy. Yeah, it's, I don't it's really that. not. But I want to tell you what happened. Missy oh. said the media, of course, is out there filming it. You know, of course, you got to remember <laughs> in Louisiana around noon. It's 100 degrees in September. And they're just like trying to get the shots because most of the lines, I mean, there's thousands of kids here, and then there's thousands of parents coming to get them. And it's hot. And she said about 20 minutes into the filming, she hears a ruckus, you know, hears sirens, and they, they walk down. Well, the anchor of the news team, she's had a heat stroke. <laughs> in the parking lot and missy's like we're literally walking over the media (laughs) to get in to pick up our kids stepping over them because she's like because when she came in i was like well how'd that go and she's like oh it's all chaos you know but look welcome to our society well no no no, but that's why i'm saying okay this is that's a to me that's a no-brainer this is one of them this is one of these things you do not do I so think you're our, fixing to cause worldwide panic. Well, that's what happened. What? It was worldwide yeah. panic. Yeah, but I, I think the media, sen- you know, I mean, they have a responsibility in this too. I know people got to know and you got to communicate. But somehow or another, this is so in our technology, techno- you know, technology 24 <laughs> hour cycle yeah. world where they yeah. run the same thing. It's like it, it people, you know, especially the, those that have mental issues, it entices them to do this kind of stuff, right. you know, and it, it does cause all this chaos. I think they got a responsibility to report what happened, but don't make it so it's yeah, somehow they, another they, they, appealing. Try not you, to sensationalize. Yeah, yeah. You've, got, you've got to go with, okay, the military's got to turn them like, okay, need to know, okay? Yeah. At the time this is going on, yeah, the parents don't need to know. Yeah, I, I mean, okay, because all you're going, you're going to start panic. <laughs> oh, it okay? ha- you're Let right. Let the people in charge handle it, and then after it's all clear, then in a calm and uh, controlled fashion, <laughs> yeah. Then let it out and say, now you can come get your children. Yeah. It, the threat has been neutralized. <laughs> so, so I, it's funny here inside talk about control. <laughs> so you're, the, you're the most out of control person no, I know. No, that's not true. Okay. So I got to ask something before we get to our, before we get to exes. So, uh, cause a lot of viewers may not, and people listening may not uh, realize this, but Jace, is named after you, Si. Yeah. And, uh, That's why me and him don't get along. Well, and, and there's a lot of headbutting, and I've wondered about that. Oh, we get along great. We so, just So we how just did that argue. come about, Dad? So so how did how did your second son come to be named after your younger brother? Well, you reel back about how old are you, Jace? 50. Thanks for bringing 50 that 50 up. 50 years ago. Yeah, 50. I turned 50 I'm two weeks ago. Up 100. I'm baiting up a trot line. <laughs> catching catfish this is a really sad story <laughs> and i'm out in the middle of the red river over there and i'm baiting up my line and i see a vehicle pull up on the bank bluff over there mm-hmm. and it was Sai. and Sai said hey he said miss k's having that baby talking about jace and i, I was baiting my hooks you know i looked up i said what do you want me to do about it and he yeah. said well this is she pre- wants to know what you want to name him I said, name him after you. <laughs> and I just kept baiting my line. Si, I saw mm. him side and sideways leaving. Well, he said, now we're getting somewhere. <laughs> the Silas name will go on forever. So, so for clarification, this was pre-Jesus, right? <laughs> yeah, this is 1969. Yeah. Is this is way yeah. before I met Jesus. Yeah. So, Si, was your purpose in going 
was to get dad, I guess, right? Uh, and, no, no. Kay said, hey, go talk to my husband and find out what he wants to name this son. I'm so she, she, she didn't really she, wanted to know what to name but, him. No, but she no. didn't want you to actually break, try to get him to come back no, with you? No. That wasn't even no, an she, option. Oh, no. She knew that wasn't even an option. <laughs> Okay, yeah. he's on the river. You know, her pioneer man is out doing what he's supposed to be doing <laughs> in the woods, catching fish or killing mm-hmm. something. But yeah. by the way, Cy named him. You know, Phil said, name him after me. So it'll be Jason Silas Robertson. And without us realizing it, it marked him. And they've, they've been at each other ever since. That's probably a good thing, though. Because yeah. he's got a lot of my mannerisms because I kept him when he was Well, I was going to say, there's a little more to it because no, actually you and Christine kept, we actually kept him during the formative, he was a formative baby. years. Well, I've heard stubborn. enough of these old stories. Let's get down to some Bible here. Okay, well, that's good work, man. That's Let's a, move on. That's the side of the story time. It's over. Boy. Well, it wasn't Cash and Phil in a very good light. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it wasn't Cash and Phil in a very good light. so uh the early days of duck commander my recollection was dad that you were the duck call maker basically the trial and error duck call man and you really didn't do a lot of the accounting work i did absolutely zero (laughs) of the accounting that was turned over to Miss Kay and whoever she could well find. eventually to me, which was a disaster. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and I find it interesting because you have two degrees from Louisiana Tech University. Mom has she barely got out of high school mainly because she had me. My, my minor was English, not not, not accounting, not, not math. Yeah. So you're not really a numbers guy. That's what we're saying, right? That's it. All right. So far we, from it. So you got to have. You've always had to have somebody take care of your accounting. Well, we got some folks now that have some accounting. Introducing NetSuite by Oracle, the business management software that handles every aspect of your business in an easy-to-use cloud platform. Now, you're you're fully you, aware of the cloud like, platform, right? How do you Never spell heard of it. it. Never heard of the Net cloud? Suite. Oh, yeah, I've liked Net Net rain clouds. <laughs> like a suite. <laughs> That's right. Cumulus. NetSuite. Sweet. Cirrus, Cirrus clouds, cumulus. <laughs> no, this is <laughs> this like is the outer space type clouds in the space of the internet virtual I'm guessing world. that this is done on the internet. It's done on the computer, yes. Yeah. That, that, that's why I, I need somebody to do this. So NetSuite yeah. is the world's number one cloud business system. Hmm. So I know you would know nothing about this, but no. you, you would need someone to know about this, this right? This is kind of like faith, but it's only accounting. They're being they're saying you can be sure of what you hope for and certain of what you don't see. I got you. If we handle your accounting. I got you. So if you, it, right now, uh, there, it, NetSuite's going to offer something for, for folks watching. Seven key strategies to grow your profits. NetSuite.com slash fill, which again, I always think is great because you not knowing anything about it and yet you looking at it saying someone has to do it. But slashing fill is not great. <laughs> we don't want to slash fill. We just want to slash on our computer okay. fill. NetSuite.com slash fill. You get to download your free guide, Seven Key Strategies to Grow Your Profits. We are about profit. Oh, yeah. yeah we, we, we run a lot of businesses, so we want to know about this, and you get that by NetSuite.com slash fill. Check it out. All right, so Sai, we've been uh, we've been kind of meandering our way through uh, Genesis and Exodus, and so uh, where we've gotten to is we got to the point of the of the ten plagues. Moses, of course, has come back to Egypt. He, his his triumphant return because he'd been there as a younger man. Now he's eighty years old. He comes back in. Uh, he's got a few tricks up his sleeve, literally. Uh, God's given him two or three miraculous signs to try to convince the Pharaoh to give up the, the slave labor that he's got with the Hebrew people. Doesn't work. Magicians are, you know, recreating some of it. So he, so they go, they go through ten plagues, which is where we left off last time. And, it, you know, they all had an impact, the plagues did, but every time, and they kind of got worse as they went along. What happens is, you know, Pharaoh seems to become more entrenched with everything that happens, you know, and you kind of get this idea. In fact, we didn't talk about this last time, but it starts out by saying, you know, Pharaoh hardened his heart. And then after you get about halfway through the plagues, it says God hardened his heart, which a lot of people have made, I think, too much out of that. What's happening is every time something happens now that God's trying to show this guy something, Mm -hmm. he just gets more hardened. 
which is interesting because you'd think he would be going the other direction. But I think you see that in other verses where God allows that. Right. So you might can come to your senses. It's like the person, you know, living complete in contrast to God's will, but claiming to be in Jesus. You know, the situation, where is it? First Corinthians 5. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, they're like, you talk to this person because they're, it's one thing to be in the world, and it addresses that. He's like, I'm not talking about you don't associate with people out in the world who do those things. And, and we, we get that. that. Jesus spent most of his time around people doing some very bad things. The difference is when you say, oh, I love Jesus, and you're just living openly and rejoicing in evil, they're like, no. There needs to be a confrontation. Here. In this particular case, I don't think uh – course he couldn't have known anything about jesus at this point pharaoh old testament you say everything jesus at this point is hidden to be revealed way in the future right but you could make a comparison kim jong-un from north korea the iranian leadership they they they're they're up to mischief and spreading terrorism worldwide both of them slaughtering their own people imprisoning their people putting in these gulags, and you look at leaders like that, and we try to work with them, right. and then we kind of make threats, you know, and you know you could just wipe them off the face of the earth, I guess, with the, we got the power and they don't have enough of it. Right. But it goes back and forth. We're trying to then we'll sanction them, and we're we're trying to punish them right. to to say, come on, just join the world community to, and quit conv- killing each other. You're trying to convince them to do the right thing. Which is, it's a Which pretty is, good comparison with Pharaoh. Yeah. You know, that's a good point. I hadn't thought about it like that. You're trying to convince people to do the right thing. Basically, these people are here. And they are hard-hearted. Hard-hearted. Kim Jong-un and the, these Iranian leadership, they are hard. But sometimes my point is you got to reach a level of being so hard-hearted where you finally just look around and say, what, what am I doing? That, that's right. Which happens rarely, but that's the only way. It, At right. some point, this type thing happens in modern modern times. That's right? a good point. No doubt. That's well, a very Bible, good point. The Bible says they come to their senses. Right. Okay, and like Jay said, if just you know, how long am I going to do this evil? Right. I mean, there okay, is when no. I, when I know deep down, yeah, it's evil. I know it's evil. There right. is no fear of God in Kim Jong Un. Or the Iranian leadership, in my opinion. Right. Not the God of the Bible. It doesn't seem to be at all. You're exactly right. Well, that's the thing that gets me about when you start reading about all these plagues. Okay, like you're talking about. You would figure after two or three of them, it would get his attention and say, whoa, 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 whoa. You know, because if you see, I've seen something like this uh, in Alabama. The Katy did, every 12 to 14 years, they have a mass they come out of the ground by the millions, okay? And when you see something in that uh, number, okay, it gets your attention. Because look, it So got this so is like a, like a pass? Yeah, it's like, like a, a, no, a it's big like the, So how yeah, many yeah. did it take to get him turned around, Al? Pharaoh. Well, 10. Well, it took 10. 10. Well, but the 10th one was. And, well, was, the, the last couple, is, which is what we talked about last time, sort of started to get into the psyche of the people because one was darkness. I mean, just yep. hand in front of your face, yep. pitch black darkness oh, for that'd several be days. No light. No light none. at all, none. Yeah. And so that, that started to break them down. And then we get to number 10, and it was called the Plague of the Firstborn. And this was an awful night. And, and you talked about this, a good point with your sometimes we see this in leadership even in today's world. Some people will only be changed when they're driven to their knees, I mean, uh, into submission. Yeah. Well, this last plague, basically the angel of death was what he was called. He swept across this whole country, and every firstborn in every family – and every animal family, yep. dead, dead. And you got to remember, instantaneously, all of these people, all of these people, under a system of natural law, they were all dead in their sins. Right, all of them. Right. There was no Jesus was not on the scene. There was no Savior. Nor Yahweh. This is far, yeah. far before the good news of Jesus ever. These people are just making their own way without God and without with without any. Uh, What's the word? 
without any goodness in them. Well, they worship the sun. You know, Remember, it hasn't sundown. been that long after the flood, and we talked about Noah and all of that. You know, right. their every thought was evil. Right. These uh, the residue of after they came back. Right. You say, but there's a lot of ev- evil and wickedness in the world at this point. So here, so a, a principle comes about as a result of this, and this is this is something that comes forward. And you mentioned a minute ago, Dad, because Jesus is not. You know, we're only seeing little prophecies kind of looking ahead that's right. the sun uh, we saw in genesis 3 pharaoh doesn't have the he hadn't heard the news yet. he doesn't know it all but here's what happens in the hebrew you know part of this of egypt they were told to do something specifically that would spare them from losing their firstborn uh, both in their animals and their in their families they were told to take a lamb uh, and to, to sacrifice it and then you know take it inside and you take the blood from the lamb and you put it on every doorpost of every family. And it was called the Passover. And this principle would come all the way forward. To and the angel of death would see the blood. See the blood yeah. and he and would pass over. over. Pass over all those, those people. Mm-hmm. So the Israelites lost no one. No animals. So no the nothing. groundwork is being laid for the coming Savior Right, way in the future. What time frame are we are, are we before Jesus here? We're we're about fifteen hundred years before, yep. uh, and so basically we're seeing this first little glimpse of kind of we call it that we've kind of labeled it the Crimson Gospel. The idea that even throughout Israelite history, there were these look aheads. These the Hebrew writer called them shadows or a copies, glimpse, a, a glimpse, glimpse. Of, yep. of what was to come. Yep. Because when you get to the New Testament, you remember John the Baptist, Dad, in John one, uh, when he shows up, he looked in verse twenty nine. It says the next day John saw Jesus coming toward him. Now they're cousins, but you know he sees him walking toward him, and he says, "Look." the Lamb of God who takes away the sins Send of the world. the world. So he was the first one to actually say, that's him, yeah. the guy we've been looking for, all the prophecies of the Messiah, everything. And he called him the Lamb of God, mm-hmm. which goes back to this principle yeah. of the Passover. That you was know? laid down 1,500 years earlier. Exactly. And the idea was is that they would always remember that there was grace. There was an opportunity for grace, and it came about because of belief and came about because of faith. Look, can you imagine? I, the Bible doesn't say anybody did it, so I'm sure it seemed like everybody was 100% on their faith. But what if somebody said, you know, I don't I don't think. Well, you lost your firstborn. That's exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I don't know that anybody did. We don't read about anybody doing it, so I assume they didn't. But the, it just was a matter of do you believe that oh, this I'm night is going positive. to happen? positive. Somebody said, to heck with that. Who you, know, you may be right. I don't know, oh. but it's yeah. it's that's what faith can do. I mean, there's yeah. there's a, it's laid out. Here's what's going to happen, and then you can make a decision to obey or not obey. Uh, me yeah. and Sire are walking testimonies of that. I mean, we're so hard headed. If somebody, you know, because I've said, look, this is where we need to go hunt. We we can't agree. <laughs> No, no. I mean, but just on little thing. Up. I'm just saying. No. I'm positive. Some people no, said no. no I ain't no, putting no, it they on. Did. Because I look at it and, and I tell people all the time when I'm out, I'm living proof that there is a God Almighty in heaven. Yeah, I'll okay. agree with that. I didn't go to college for six years and take drama class and all these actors courses and all that. Yeah. God gave us a TV show for crying out loud and. I was one of the stars in it. <laughs> that yeah. would take you were the star. So I'm going to and say you were divine intervention. <laughs> yeah, for crying I out loud. Agree. Yeah. yeah. So you know, I have like to you agree. Say, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I, look, you got no argument. I've agreed with you more today than I ever have. So I don't know. It's <laughs> well, kind of deep down, we're pretty well rooted. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're right, Sai, and I think. And by the way. I hear this everywhere I go. I speak. I'm still speaking all around the country, and everybody loves different the family as a whole. But yep. Sai has a special place in their heart, and so I, I think you're right. I think God knew, right? Because I always say that I, when I'm telling the story about Sai, I always say that you know Sai, Sai spent twenty almost twenty five years in the military, and so just. Head, but I asked Sai one time. I said, "All the how many CEOs you have? What did you say? 25? Uh, 23. 23. And how many of them knew what they were talking uh, about? No, no. Look, <laughs> yeah, this is so funny because look, out of the twenty three officers that I served under, twenty one of them tried to put me in jail. Yeah. I had. Two. I wonder why. I, no, no. I had two that actually were pretty good guys. Right. 
<laughs> so, no, but honestly, they are all good, honest people because if they wouldn't, have, they would have put me in jail. So probably in reality, the two that you thought were all right, they needed to be locked up, and the twenty-one of them were right. <laughs> so I always say when I tell that, and and everybody laughs. I always say, and that's how hard-headed Cy is, and everybody laughs. And I, yeah, I get that. I watch the show, but then I always tell them. But Cy has his his heart, his head is is hard. But his heart is soft, and it's soft to, to Christ. And that's what shaped him and changed him. And that's what allowed him to be a big star uh, and do what he does. So this idea of the Passover comes forward. And this is, and this is another text in 1 Corinthians 5, 7. For Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. So you see it all throughout the New Testament. Yep. That, that really it is Christ. Even back then, yep. it was still pointing forward. And that's why when you get to Hebrews 11, you talked about this last time, Jase, that together with us they would be made perfect all throughout history it's always pointed to the cross that that was going to be the saving grace for all people and so we see this even way back then that's why people say well why even study the old testament you know it's just old stories and why why would that matter but you got to know where you come you got to know it It was the foundation because the cross not only did it go to the present those who were putting their faith in jesus which wasn't a lot it went futuristic to us, but it also went in the past. That's right. It was all those hearts who trusted God and said, you know what? He said to put put some blood on the doorpost. Do you, you realize know, do how it. difficult it would be to institute the Passover lamb that far in advance yep. of Jesus, our Passover lamb? Do you realize how difficult that would be for that to match up like it did? It's it's amazing. And it wasn't it's just that. Reasons and I, I believe how in the world could forty people have gotten together yeah, and over, come that over this span. story? It ain't gonna happen. It ain't it's gonna happen. story after story, and they're all relevant. Ugh. And looking in the future, and you say, "Boy, was yeah. this ever laid out in advance?" But so. he did it all based on the fact that he wanted to be with people. You know, the whole deal in Exodus, he was he was saying, "I want to, I want, I'm going to bring you to me." I mean, how many times is that phrase? in there i noticed it just reading through the book i mean that was the overall riding principle we all look at the journey and you think you're going from point a to point b they're being oppressed god doesn't like anybody being oppressed much less his chosen people but he was basically saying i'm bringing you to me i want to live with people so when you get to jesus it's the same principle he's bringing humanity all of humanity now not just the jews all of humanity can come to me through Jesus. That's the right. Passover lamb. But here's which here's, is awesome. Here's you know? something that'll blow your mind. So we're looking at this from the Egyptian standpoint. They're holding on. They won't let go. So this breaks them, by the way. And, and finally, he's like, yep. "Get out of here! You know, take whatever you want." So they go and they literally plundered Egypt. But people are just giving them stuff to leave. They're like, "We don't want you people here because yeah. you're you're the yeah. sign of death." Everybody's like, "Get out of here! Yeah. Take our gold, whatever." Yeah. So imagine it, flip it now and look at it from the Israelite perspective. You've seen all these plagues that didn't affect you. You you plundered a country without war, basically just left because of what God did to them. You miraculously crossed the Red Sea. I mean, literally water, walls of water on both sides. And then the water drowns the Egyptian army because Pharaoh had one last change of heart, tried to get them one last time. God drowned the whole bunch. Bad call. You see all that. And within months, they're murmuring, they're complaining, and they say they want to go back to Egypt. Back to slavery. Back to slavery. At least there, we had some leeks and onions to eat. Yeah, you know, yeah. we're out here in the middle of the desert. Human nature. I mean, is that not incredible? I mean, just a few months removed from these all these miraculous, amazing things, and you're willing to go back under slavery instead of believe that God has a path. So that's what happened. And so for 40 years, God said, you know what? You're going to wander around out here until this generation dies out. None of you are going to go to the promised land. You're not going to the promised land that that I have laid out that we've been talking about for 300 years. You're not getting to see it. That's how disgusted he got with them through a lot of processes. You know what's sad is you kind of hear that same story sometime in some of these churches or I hear these stories and they're like, you know, just nothing's going to change here for the positive until some of these people die. Yeah, I mean, I've heard people say that Me too, yeah. and they're like, they're and, so headstrong, and you kind of cringe and when dead you're... wrong. Yeah, but they're like, you know, we're just waiting on them to die. I'm like, that's sad. Unfortunately, 
the uh, whole umbrella of Christianity with all the various splintering and dividing and divisiveness and all you add it all up and you say no wonder in many cases when the world looks at all that they say that's the last thing i want to get hooked up with yeah no you can't blame them i've always said that there's a lot of things about religion that is and that's so sad and the evil one works in the what's that uh, second corinthians 11 where it says the the evil one masquerades as an angel of light. Yeah. Because yeah. when you put forth yourself as as Jesus, you getting back to answers. what yeah, getting back to what I was I was saying earlier, when someone claims to be a disciple of Jesus and they live the exact opposite out there in the world, that's basically the worst thing you can do. Yeah. You think about it because you're saying, oh yeah, I love Jesus, and then you're in your actions, you're being so hypocritical that people just make a mockery. So of many Al that we convert. They turn to Jesus. They're they're they've lost their house. They've lost their mate. The mate's gone. Uh, then they've lost their house. They've lost their vehicle. They've lost their driver license in order to drive a vehicle if they had one. And you say, and they're on foot, and they're on the rehab, and you're like, y- you've ended up with nothing. They'll come to Jesus. Many of them, you say, three or four months. Where at uh, where at that one? We what happened to her? What happened to him? And you look, and they're right back out there again, with the same old group, getting high, getting drunk, getting laid. Back into slavery. Back into slavery. But you it's know, the difference it, in it's, just a, it's a difference in God thinking God's going to take care of all your problems in, in a magic show. Or a magic potion that now you're going to have this blissful life. When in fact Jesus said, "You want to follow me? Bring your cross. Bring your own cross. Yep. You look at mine, but bring your own because yep. you're going to need it. That's right. So he was saying it is going to be suffering. It all comes back down to faith, Al. It does. So uh, next time we get together, we'll we'll talk about what that looked like because God had something really really awesome planned for His people, and so. To see their hearts and what it led them to is really sad. Uh, next time we'll talk about law because the law gets introduced during this process on Mount Sinai, and that has another huge implication. The Passover is a great implication of Christ and faith. The law is going to have a whole other implication. Now he's going to write it all down on how to operate. Exactly. <laughs> and, and then people will trust that, which he's, will become a huge issue. So yep. Good we'll luck. talk about that next time uh, on Unashamed Podcast. Si, it's always good to have you in the. Uh, in the in si, like may your aim always, always be, be true. true. Thanks for naming me, Si. It is. That got me kind of teary eyed. Well, no, just kidding. You're a good man. <laughs> <laughs> Why well, they being Si? We've had like an intervention. There here has, it's a bonding. I'm glad. See, that's what happens in the command center bonding. No, by the way. Oh, they finally, finally. Si, you need to talk into the microphone. <laughs> Some of our scientists have finally said, well, okay, let's look on the bottom of the Red Sea and see see if we can see what we can find. Guess what they found? Bones. They found a lot of bones of horses, a lot of chariots, a lot of <laughs> men's bones, okay, and a lot of armament that the, Isra- the uh, Egyptians had. Yeah. So, you know, you can read about it. <laughs> okay, then they go down there and find it, and they're shocked. Yeah, they like- Listen to Uncle (laughs) Sack. Later. So we're so glad you guys were with us today. You can subscribe on iTunes or Spotify or YouTube or Facebook. And be sure and rate us on iTunes so that other people can know about the podcast.